Hello everybody uh, and welcome to this, the, the lesson 5 or the, the, the fifth lesson of our course Flow of Fluids in Pump Practice. The name of this lesson is the pump head added to energy of system. We will consider, as I mentioned before or in the past lesson, the energy added by, by the pump to the system. So let's start with the lesson. We have represented here a pipe system, including a pump, with the aim to, to transport the fluid from the section 1, the, the pipe section 1, to the pipe section 2. We have the fluid in section 1 with certain operating conditions, diameter, velocity, pressure, etc. And the same we have in the, in the section 2. Let's analyze step by step what kind of energy we have in every one of these sections. I mean in section 1, section S, the pump suction, section D, the discharge section of pump, the section D, and the section 2, another pipe. We, we want to, to convey, we, we want to transport the fluid from section 1 to, to section 2. As indicated in drawing, we, we have that section 1 is elevated, a height Z1 over or above the, the reference plane that pass through the, the axis of the pump, through the MPHH or datum plane. At, at this section, we have the pressure or the energy due to pressure Remember that we here are expressing the term of the energy equation as energy per unit of weight. Regarding section S, what we have is the height ZS that match the reference plane. So in this case, the, the head Z uh, is zero. <laughs> there is no height over this plane. The pressure at this section, the same that before, is PS divided by density multiplied by gravity. So we can draw the, the piezometric line be between two, two sections. What another term do we have to consider regarding the energy equation? Velocity or kinetic energy at section 1 and the kinetic energy at section S. I mean the square velocity at section S divided by 2 multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. We can draw also the energy line. Of course, the, we have energy losses so that the line is not ideal. I think the ideal flows where, where pressure losses or energy losses were not present. Here we will have pressure losses HL between the section 1 and the section S. Regarding section 2, the pipe, where the, we, we want to, to, to transport or, or the, the fluid from section 1, we have K Z2 over the reference planes, pressure due to energy, P2 divided by density multiplied by gravity, and the other term we have to consider is, of course, the kinetic energy. Well, you know that this is the way in which we express the kinetic energy. What else do we need to consider at this section? What another term we, do we need to, to take into account? Of course, the pressure losses, but because between the section uh, D, the, the discharge flange of the pump, and the section 2, energy losses will occur. HL between D and 2. Please know how the velocity head, the kinetic energy at section D, is higher than the one at section 2, because Diameter at section D is lower than diameter at section 2. And following the mass conservation law, we know that when, when diameter is reduced, the velocity increases.
since the value of the geodetic head at section G is zero, because this section matches the reference plane, what we have here is pressure, energy due to pressure. We can represent the piezometric line between these two sections this way, and the same for the energy line, the energy level. This is the level we have of uh, the, the energy level we have at section S. And this is the energy level we need at section D to transport, to, to move the fluid this, from this section to, to the section 2. There is a gap, there is a lack of energy, this one that I'm representing. So we need to add this amount of energy to the system. Who is in charge? Who, who we will use? Who is the responsible to add the, the energy to the system? Of course, the pump. And this amount of energy needed by the system is the uh, amount of energy that pump should provide to the system. And this is the pump head. H or HP or TDH, it can be called in a different way. The, the, the right way to, to, to name this is the pump head. The same happens with the piezometric line if we join this gap between the two points with the red line. Let's divide this graphic into two parts. First, we will see the total head at pump section, the equations to determine the pump head at pump section. This was what we had in previous graphic. The total head at section one is equal to the sum of the geodetic head Z1 plus the pressure head P1 plus the kinetic energy. This is the equation one. And at section 2, what we have, if the geodetic head Zs over the reference plane, the pressure or the, or the energy pressure, and the pressure due to kinetic energy, the, the velocity head. Since the, the head Zs over the reference planes match uh, the, this plane, the value set is zero at, the, at that section. So, we can calculate the value of HTS, the total head absorption, as the difference between the, the head that we had at section 1 minus the pressure losses between the section 1 and section S. If we replace in equation 3, or include in the equation 3, the equation 2, we obtain the equation number 4. We, we have to include all the terms of the head at section 1 minus the pressure losses at section, uh, between section 1 and section S. Let's analyze the same for the discharge. To determine or to find the equation to, to determine the total head at pond discharge. What we have at section D and the total head D is the sum of ZD plus the energy due to pressure or the, or the pressure head plus the velocity head of kinetic energy at uh, this section. Since the, the head over the, the reference plate at, at this section is zero, we can eliminate this term from the equation. And let's see what happened in section two. The total head uh, HT2 is equal to the sum of the three terms of the energy equation. Sec two on the geodetic head at this section, the pressure head at this section, and the velocity head uh, at this section. So, what is the energy to, to need, do we need to add to the fluid to move this or to transport this from the section D to, to, to section two? 
were the energy that that we have in section two plus or plus the the energy losses between two sections. We 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 need to add at this charge of the pump an additional energy to cover the the losses that we will have uh, of pressure of the energy losses between two sections. If we replace in, or include in section in equation seven the equation six, we obtain the same that before that we have the total energy uh, that the uh, section T, uh, D is equal to, to the total energy at section 2 plus the energy losses that will occur that should be considered in the, in the energy of section D. And finally, to determine the total pump head between the section 1 and the section 2. Well, what is the energy that the pump shall supply or, or should add to the system to, to cover or to fulfill this lack of energy? Well, the difference between the energy that we have or the total energy that we have in section D, the total head at section D, minus the energy, total energy at section S, total head at section S. Remember that we have already determined these two equations, equation 8 and, sec and equation 4, with the formulas to determine the, the value of HTD and HTS. If we include these two equations in equation 9, we obtain the equation 10, where all the terms have been included. Let's move this equation here to be clearer what is the the energy that the pump should add to the system well the energy required to cover or to fulfill the difference in height between the point 2 and the point 1 the difference in geodetic height to cover the difference in energy related to the pressure between the point 2 and the point 1 and the difference between the energy levels due to kinetic energy between the section 2 and the section 1. And the pressure losses, of course, between section 1 and section 2. This is the energy, the, the head that the pump should add to the system to cover the required lack or, or required need of energy between the two, the two points required by the system. Well, this is all for today. In the next lesson, we will recall how to determine the pressure losses for stray pipes and also in accessories and valves and so on. And after that, after knowing how to determine the pressure losses, we will go back to, to this, to, to system with pumps, and we will analyze different kind of system with free surfaces, liquids, or where pressure vessels, etc, etc. Well, this is all for today. I will be waiting for you in the next lesson. Goodbye.